An updated sunscreen video has been highly requested by you guys, so today I'm gonna to get into all the specifics, why I'm so picky on sunscreen, exactly what to look for, and I'm gonna share all of my favorite products. I've got about 12 products here, and why they're all amazing, non-toxic, and just look great on your skin. Okay, I'm super excited about today's video because I have so many amazing sunscreen products to share that you will love, that work great, that are non-toxic. I'm gonna get into all of the details as the video goes, but this is gonna be a little bit of a lengthy video because I think it's important to understand what the ingredients are that you're looking for so that you don't always just have to go by my recommendation. Like if you see a new product and you wanna know if it's good or not, you're gonna learn how to figure that out. So. Because it's so long, I'm gonna pop up a few timestamps right here so that if you just wanna see the actual products going on and they're finished and just kind of wanna see what products I approve of and my recommendations, you can get to that. Or if you wanna learn a little bit about the ingredients, which I do recommend, then you can also watch that. I know I filmed some previous videos on sunscreen before, but I wanted to do an updated one because I think it's normal as you evolve. Like I've had my YouTube channel for almost three years now and you change as a person, you learn new things, you try new products. So doing different variations of videos is okay. And even if there's maybe a product that I loved before that now I don't love anymore because I wanna recommend something else, I think that's just human nature. So this is gonna be kind of my gold standard video to go by. And the most important thing in this video too is I wanna share the products that I love and recommend because there are so many amazing ones out there that are clean, non-toxic, really effective, and don't leave a white cast on your skin. So I wanna show you like on my arm and I, I'll like rub the product in so you can see the exact finish and then you can pick whichever one's best for you. But there's no need to be using um, a sunscreen that's harmful for you. So first let's just talk about UVA versus UVB. I'm sure you've seen this on different products like UVA, UVB protection. I just wanna quickly explain what this means so you can understand why you want certain ingredients versus other ingredients. So UVA is really responsible for like skin aging, wrinkles, um, fine lines, photosensitivity, photo damage, those are UVA rays. Whereas UVB is more responsible for sunburn. So Sunburn, yes, is bad, but if you're just focusing on UVB, you're not going to get as much protection for the skin aging, photo damage, all the stuff I just mentioned for UVA. Now, of course, there's the biggest picture of all, which is skin cancer, melanoma, protecting your skin and your health. So overall, you do want coverage on both. The reason this is so important is because when you look at a sunscreen over the counter at a drugstore and you see SPF 10, SPF 20, SPF 50, I know some people think they're super protected when they get like an SPF 80 or something. That number only tells you how long it will last. And if you don't believe me, you can easily look this up. There's a lot of research on this. The SPF factor doesn't actually tell you how strong the sunscreen is, rather how long it will last. And it's actually different for everyone. Here's how you figure it out. First, you have to know what your burn time is, meaning how long would it take you to go in the sun and burn without any sunscreen on? Then you take that number in minutes and multiply it by the SPF factor. So if it takes you 10 minutes to burn without any sunscreen and you have an SPF 30, 10 times 30 is 300 minutes and that's how long that product will last you. This is literally all the SPF factor means. So when you see an SPF 30, it doesn't mean it's stronger than an SPF 10, it's just telling you how long it will last and this depends on the person. So for all of my skincare junkies who care about preventing early signs of wrinkles and aging and actually want that protection, the SPF factor means nothing. If you use an SPF 10 versus an SPF 80, it literally wouldn't tell you any difference in strength. All it's telling you is how long it will last to not give you a sunburn, which are two completely different things. Now, protecting against the sunburn is still important because you probably are, if, if you're out in the sun long enough, you're getting a burn, you're likely also getting skin damage and all the other stuff. So it is still important, but you don't wanna look at the number when you're focusing on actual skin aging. While both UVA and UVB are important, just a little fun fact, there's actually 500 times more UVA rays than UVB in sunlight. So UVA is stronger. So we just always wanna make sure we're protecting that. So now let's get into ingredients. If you've watched my previous videos on sunscreen, while I might've had different you know, product recommendations, I am always talking about zinc oxide and why I care so much about this ingredient. So when you get a sunscreen, there's basically two different types you can get. You can get a chemical SPF or a physical SPF. Physical sunscreen, which includes zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, is the only two you have to remember. 
This physically blocks the sun from hitting your skin. So picture like a shield over your face, that's how it works. It's actually creating a physical barrier. One of the benefits to that, I think, is that as soon as you put it on, it's effective. You don't have to wait 15 minutes, whereas a chemical sunscreen you have to wait, which I'll get into. So it blocks everything from hitting, you know, hitting your face and your body, of course. We're not just talking about the face. The reason a lot of people don't traditionally like physical blockers is because they leave a really thick white cast on your skin, or so you think. We're gonna get into some amazing products that don't do this, but you know, they kind of have that reputation of being really white and chalky and thick and like hard to spread on. This is why most people prefer chemical SPF, which includes a few different ingredients. They're a bit long, so I think it's better that I just pop them up right here and you can check them out. But these have a thinner consistency. A lot of times they're translucent. So of course, like sits better under your makeup and you know, people like them more. The reason I don't like chemical, well, there's a lot of reasons. Number one, what actually first intrigued me on this was learning how chemical SPF works. It works by having a chemical reaction with the sun. So usually these names actually mean something. And basically it creates like a heat in order to like deflect the sun's rays on your skin. And any heat, if you have melasma or hyperpigmentation is not good for you. And that's why like I actually have to avoid a lot of steam rooms and hot yoga because any heat can exacerbate melasma, hyperpigmentation, dark spots, anything you have. That was already like a no-no for me. Number two, it takes 15 minutes to actually work. So when you use these chemical sunscreens, if you just like throw it on your body and your face and then you run out into the sun, it's not gonna work the first 15 minutes. And I'm telling you, the damage can really be done in those 15 minutes. So that's another thing. And lastly, and most importantly, they're just not good for your health. There are so many different articles and so much research showing that they can actually get into your skin. We all know now that like products you put on your skin can actually get absorbed into your body. So later I'll just go through some of those and give you the, you know, quick highlights on what research shows and how they can affect you. Some of them are reproductive toxicity. Some of them get into other things, but you know, just for your own research and knowledge to know why you should try to avoid those. So let's talk about physical blockers since these are my favorite. So we've got zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. Now these are both kind of the gold standard two physical blockers. Titanium dioxide is clean and healthy for you. So it's not a bad product to use, but zinc oxide is just so much better. Basically, zinc oxide is gonna cover everything. It has full protection against all kinds of UVA rays, all kinds of UVB rays, whether it's on its own, whether it's combined with anything, like if you have zinc oxide, you are good to go. Whereas titanium dioxide protects against UVB, so it will help you with the sunburns, but it only protects against certain types of UVA. So there's like short wavelengths, long wavelengths, which you don't need to memorize, but you just need to know that it doesn't protect against every kind of UVA. Now, when they're in combination, it works better and you'll get full coverage, but that's really just because you're getting the zinc oxide. So if you see them together, great, but either way, just stick to zinc oxide. One more other thing to know about zinc oxide is you wanna to stick to non-nanoparticle size. So basically this is explaining the size, literally of the chemical ingredient of the particle. And non-nano means that it's not smaller than the nanoparticle size, which means it won't get into your skin and get absorbed into your body as much. So it's kind of like a serum. We want the particle size to be really small, which is usually why that's considered a serum and it's more active and it's more effective, which is why they're more expensive versus something with a big particle size that's not gonna be able to get through the layers of your skin. So when it comes to sunscreen, non-nano is a good thing and it more just sits as literally like a shield on your skin. And one more thing about physical blockers, titanium dioxide and zinc oxide is that they are coral reef safe. So they are safe for our health. They're safe for the environment. I know a lot of people really care about this. So just overall, like better for everything, just more reason to stick to physical sunscreen. Okay, so now we know that zinc oxide is the most important and this is what you have to focus on, but there is one more thing that's very important, which is the percentage of zinc oxide. So I say this for literally everything. It doesn't matter what skincare product I'm using. It doesn't matter what food I'm using, what like medication I'm taking. Look at the active ingredient. You have to learn to just turn the product around and basically ignore anything the front of it says because that's all marketing and there are just so many legalities and things that people can say that don't really mean what it would be marketed as. For example, like a food product says like almonds, walnuts, and raisins. And you're like, oh, that's all it has. And you look on the back and there's like 30 other ingredients. So just always think of this and look at the active ingredients. So when you look at zinc oxide, 
You might find one or another that, you know, both have the same SPF factor because as we know, that really doesn't mean anything in terms of how strong it is. One could say 4% and one could say 20%. So you really want to make sure you're getting a high percentage. I personally prefer zinc oxide 19% or higher because that's really the highest I've seen. I have seen one product go to like 25% and I'm going to go through my products now. But really, for the most part, I see 19%, 20%, 21%. So I know I'm getting the best protection in terms of that. And also, there are so many great products that literally don't leave any white cast on your skin that go on like makeup. That's why I'm so excited about this video. And I actually can't wait to get to the end of the video to share all the little swatches so you guys can see there's just so many amazing products that have full coverage that are safe and that don't look bad on your skin. So. Now let's get into a few things about chemical sunscreen. I'm hoping that after watching this, you have no need to use chemical sunscreen, but I just wanna go through some of the ingredients so that you do know the harm it could cause to your health. Okay, so first let's talk about oxybenzone. I'm gonna pop it up right here so you can see the spelling. So this is a pretty common chemical ingredient and the biggest concern and risk here is reproductive health. So it's been shown to affect breast development, infant size, sperm quality, and also, like I said, chemical ingredients are bad for the environment. One thing I thought was pretty interesting is that this ingredient, as well as octanoxate, are banned in Hawaii because of the damage they do on the coral reefs. Or they're going to be banned in 2021, depending on whatever you're watching this video. But I thought that was kind of interesting, so maybe we'll all follow suit with Hawaii. One chemical ingredient I really want to highlight is avobenzone because this one's a little unique. So it's used pretty commonly and actually on its own, even though it's a chemical ingredient, isn't that bad for your health. The EWG gives it a one to two ranking, which is the lowest rankings, meaning it's not that bad for you. So on its own, it's okay. But the thing about it is it actually only lasts about 30 minutes for effectiveness. Once it's exposed to the sun, which is the whole reason you're putting sunscreen on, it actually breaks down pretty quickly. So for that reason, they often combine it with other chemical blockers. Like you might see it combined with like an octanoxate or any of the other ones I've you know, listed earlier in the video. So then you're just getting the negative effects of the other chemical ingredients. And there's actually one study published in 2020 that was pretty interesting showing that when it's combined with chlorine, which as you might imagine could be very common if you have sunscreen on and then you go in the pool, that it could actually get into your body and affect your endocrine system and your endocrine system can pretty much affect your entire body. So we don't wanna, we just don't want to have anything that's really seeping in and affecting anything in our body. So for that reason, while on its own, it's pretty safe and like if it's not combined with anything, I would just say avoid it because all the products I have here are great and don't include it. So it's just not necessary. One more chemical ingredient I think worth mentioning in this video is homosalate, which I might be pronouncing it correctly, but this ingredient is known to basically build up in our bodies faster than we're able to excrete it, which can lead to different types of toxicity, specifically estrogen, progesterone, hormonal changes, which again, affect everything. So just another one to kind of look out for. And honestly, there are a few more, but in general, just avoid these chemical ingredients. I'm gonna pop them all up right here so you can take a screenshot of this. Let me just smile. <laughs> you can take a screenshot of this and then you can just remember to avoid these ingredients when you're looking at sunscreen. So let's just recap really quick. Zinc oxide, titanium dioxide, these are the physical blockers that we like. Overall, we just wanna to stick to zinc oxide. Like if you have it in your product, it's good. Titanium dioxide won't harm you. It, it's a great addition, but not that necessary. If you have zinc, look for high percentages of zinc oxide. Try to stick to 19% or higher. If it's lower, if it's like in the 14 or 15% and it's combined with titanium dioxide, I'm usually okay with it. A lot of the body ones for some reason are at that percentage. I'm not sure why, but that's what's on the market. So those are our physical blockers. And then the chemical blockers, I'm not going to get into all of those again, but they're bad for our health, they're bad for the environment, and while traditionally they have a nicer finish, there are way more products coming out now that are amazing, and we're going to get into those right now. Okay, now let's get into products. I'm so excited to show you guys these. You're going to love and just no reason to not use these because there's so many great options. They're all zinc oxide based, high percentages. The first two products I'm showing you are non-tinted and can be used on your face or body. First, we have Juice Beauty Sport. This is such an incredible product and smells amazing. It's actually one of the most high quality, but also affordable SPFs I've ever come across. It looks white, but once you rub it in, it's completely transparent and it actually gives your skin a very luminous look. 
Next is Naturopathica. This has a thicker texture than Juice Beauty, so it takes a little longer to massage in, but once you do, it won't leave a white cast. This one also has green tea, which can treat and prevent sun damage. Both of these products are great, but my favorite would have to go to Juice Beauty based on texture and how it applies. The next four products I'm showing you are very lightly tinted, but once applied, appear pretty transparent. They definitely won't give you a makeup look. First, we have Raw Elements, which has a super high strength of zinc oxide, but it's literally not white at all. It's tan. It looks like it would go on really dark, but it doesn't once you rub it in. It has almost a clay-like texture and can feel a little sticky at first, but that will go away after 5 to 10 minutes. If it still feels too sticky, you can also add an SPF translucent powder on top, and that will really take it down. Overall, it leaves your skin very dewy. This next one is also by Raw Elements. It's a very similar product, but with a slightly lower strength of zinc oxide. The texture on this one isn't quite as thick. It feels more like a lotion than clay, but overall it still gives you full UVA and UVB protection. This one also has cacao in it, which adds an amazing burst of antioxidants, and it gives the product a really nice chocolate scent. This next product is by MD Solar Sciences, and it has a blend of both zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. It's tinted, but once you apply it, it goes on fairly transparent. One thing to note about this SPF is that it contains dimethicone, which gives products a very distinct silky texture and matte finish. Not everyone likes this, but if you do, this will be a great fit for you. Lastly, we have Think Sport. This product has a really incredible texture that truly feels like you're applying a face moisturizer. I have a lot of product on my arm, so don't be alarmed. It really applies transparent. The tint doesn't actually translate onto your skin. This brand also carries a non-tinted version for face, but I wouldn't recommend it. The tinted one leaves a much nicer finish. The next three products I'm sharing are my personal favorites that I use on rotation most days. They give you very nice partial coverage like a BB or CC cream, but still have full UVA and UVB protection. First, we have Juice Beauty Stem Cellular CC Cream, which is literally my holy grail product. It has the perfect amount of dewiness and truly gives your skin the most incredible glow. This is my go-to when I'm running errands or going to the beach. It has light coverage so you can apply it quickly with your hands and not worry about it leaving streaks, and it's slightly buildable with a couple layers. It comes in a few different shades, and the one I'm using is Warm Glow. This next product is by Well People, and it's also really incredible. It gives a little more coverage than Juice Beauty, so if you're looking for more of a light foundation and SPF together, this one is great. Even though it provides good coverage, I like that it still has a dewy, glowy finish. It comes in three different shades, and the one I'm using is medium. This last one by Iris and Romeo has a super dreamy, mousse-like texture. It gives great coverage, similar to Well People, but with a creamier texture. It's also buildable if you want more coverage. One thing that makes Iris and Romeo stand out is that it also gives you protection against blue light, so you're really protected with this product. It comes in six different shades, and the one I'm using is medium. This next product is a powder SPF by Brush on Block. This is absolutely perfect for applying over a liquid SPF or reapplying throughout the day over makeup. You can tap it a few times to get the product to the surface and then apply directly to your skin, but I've found that it's hard to get a lot of product out that way, so I actually like to open up the bottom and tap the product onto my hand and then apply. It comes in a tinted and translucent color, but I would recommend the tinted because it's a very light tint and prevents any white cast on your skin. I also love a different brand of powder SPF by Mineral Fusion. It applies the exact same way but has an even stronger version of zinc oxide, so these are two options. The last three products I'm sharing are body sunscreens that are non-tinted. This first product by Think Sport offers great protection on the body but definitely leaves your skin a little white. It's great if you're working outside in the sun all day and don't necessarily care what you look like and just want full protection. It's also great for babies or kids. I also want to mention that this brand makes two other full body sunscreen products, one for babies and one for kids, but all three of these products are the exact same ingredients, so there's really no need to waste your money on different versions. Any of the three will work for the whole family. The last product I'm sharing is by Kula, which has a slightly lower zinc oxide, but definitely goes on a little less thick than Think Sport. If you're going to the beach or a pool party, this might be a better option for the way it looks on your skin. It also comes in a spray, which is supposed to make application a little easier, but to be honest, it's very hard to spray and often gets stuck because zinc oxide is such a thick product, so I actually find the lotion easier to apply. One thing to look out for with this brand is that they have two forms of SPF, a chemical and mineral. Make sure you're getting the mineral one, which is another term for physical blocker. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Please save it and use it as a resource whenever you need to remember what sunscreen to use. And depending on whichever one you choose, just remember it's super important to wear it every day, numerous times a day. So I will link 
all of the products that I like below this video. I also share a lot of really short form content on different things like this on my TikTok, so you guys can check that out, and I will see you next time.